I will uh, preface the whole thing by saying I've tried to encapsulate uh, 10 ish years of product management experience in healthcare into like four slides, which is, uh, you know, just kind of crazy as I was going through and doing it. But since today, uh, today's is a shorter format than what we typically have given, you know, everyone's remote. Um, I figured it'll be a good idea. Just kind of like do the high level, like 20,000 foot view. Um, and by all means, you know, please ask questions. And even after this session today, I'm open to like, you know, re reach out to me on Facebook uh, and I'd be happy to like set up a conversation and start talking about it. Um, cool. So let's just dive right into it. So um, what is different about healthcare technologies? And and when I when you, my purpose of this slide is mostly to say as compared to the rest of tech, right? So when you when I when I talk about the rest of technology, you know, it's both both like mostly consumer applications, you know, or social media applications, um, or even you know things like um, devices and and all of that stuff. So so what's really different about healthcare technology specifically? Um, and the number one thing that comes to mind. Um, is just the level of regulations, uh, patient privacy, compliance, and, and legal obligations that you have. Um, it, historically, over all my experiences in health tech, uh, as a product manager, I have usually had about 30% uh, to, to sometimes even 40% of my roadmap just dedicated to regulatory and uh, uh, compliance and privacy. So, uh, you know, if you're and not yet a product manager or you are one 30 percent to 40 percent of your roadmap is a lot and uh you know in the healthcare technology space this is stable sticks you, you got to do this just to even uh like compete the second thing that's very different about healthcare technology is now if you look at regular tech um you know you have your twilio's of the world you have you know square you have stripe you have all these companies that have done a great job of just like openly allowing consumer applications to dip into APIs and pull data and send it here, you know, and do all that good stuff. Um, whereas in healthcare technology, it's the opposite. So uh, it's very difficult to acquire healthcare data. Um, and a lot of it is siloed. So for example, I live here in San Francisco, um, UCSF down the street uses the same system as um, let's say Sutter Health, which is up in Pacific Heights. Uh, but those two systems won't talk to each other just because they're, they belong to like different health systems. And then there's all these data privacy issues. And so everything remains siloed and no one really wants to give access to that data. So that's, uh, it's, it's a, it's a big restriction of uh, building products in healthcare technology. Then the third thing, which is a lot more interesting, uh, which was actually a revelation for me being at Instacart. Uh, which was at its core, not a healthcare technology company, was that your business model and how you make money in healthcare does not depend on, it, it does not depend on how many millions of daily or monthly active users you have. Uh, and the simple reason for that is um, when you have, especially here in the United States, when you have a healthcare system that's uh, completely driven by insurance and you have the payer model where payers actually reimburse um, a healthcare provider for their services, um, your, when health tech comes into the picture, uh, you don't actually really, uh, you don't drive to build a product that let's say, you know, your ten, five year plan is I need 100 million monthly active users, right? So that's not a thing in healthcare technology, which also means uh, it takes away a lot of that uh, consumer emphasis uh, at first pass when you think about it. Um, top of the funnel. So it, when you when you talk about any application, you, you're talking about number of users who actually get access to it. How many people are going to even see it? How many people are even going to hear of it? So for example, just take product school, right? Some of you must have just Google searched um, hey, I want to learn about product management. You saw an ad about uh, product school, right? Um, or you had a friend who did something on product tool, posted it on Facebook, you saw it on social media, and now you're, you're looking at it. So that's the top of the funnel in the rest of the world. Whereas in the healthcare system, uh, in healthcare technology, there is no such thing. Like if I want to um, Google, if I search for, hey, show me my health records from uh, Dr. Smith, um, I will get nothing. 
Uh, and so the top of your funnel of how, how as a user you even access any healthcare technology product, it begins at the point of care. So you have to, you have to go to a hospital, to an ambulatory clinic, uh, to uh, when you get your blood work done, so on and so forth, to actually even access the product. So it's a very restricted, much smaller top of the funnel than your typical consumer uh, application. And then finally, uh, one of the biggest aspects about healthcare technology is uh, there's always multiple elements uh, when it comes to uh, who your stakeholders are. So when you're building a product in healthcare technology, you're not just building it for the patient. Uh, you're also building it for their partners, uh, their families. You're building it for their providers. Like if you, if you have to play in the health technology space, you have to have that provider component. Uh, because if you go to the first bullet point, which is about regulations and compliance, no one will let you credibly play in the healthcare technology space unless you have a plug-in into health systems and providers. Because when it comes to patient safety, uh, patient information, um, no one really wants to trust it unless you're affiliated with some sort of provider or health system. So that's a very unique set of, and I, I want to describe this slide as like, these are not just the uh, unique elements about healthcare technology, but if, if you're a product manager or someone getting into product management um, and who looks at your typical consumer app or a social media app, these are all constraints, which would, if, if they existed in the social media world, we would not have a Facebook or we would not have um, a Twitter uh, or Snapchat uh, because simply because uh, some of these bullet points would completely kill that business model. So that's the uniqueness about healthcare technology. And uh, I'm going to pause here for um, a few seconds to see if there's any questions. Um, and if not, I'll, I'll continue on and we can do questions in the end. Good. Um, I guess I have a question. Um, when you talk about health tech products, can you give us some examples so you know? Um, yeah, you would understand totally. that better. Yeah, sure. Sure. So, uh, and again, uh, uh, this is a very broad, uh, uh, pr uh, you know, s opening slide as well as presentation. So, healthcare technology. There's so many products that span right from. You could be talking about, uh, you know, in the instrumentation space, whether it's uh, how you're innovating when it comes to imaging technologies or when it comes to surgical technologies. So that is one form of healthcare technology products. Um, another form, um, and towards the end of this, I actually have a slide on some emerging areas, which is a lot more interesting and consumer driven. Uh, but then now you have a lot of apps which are trying to help uh, in, in healthcare technology, like you have apps like um, Mindful, Headspace, uh, which are all, uh, which are just talking about, you know, mental health and how you handle those conditions. Um, so that's, again, an example of uh, consumer side of healthcare technology. Uh, then you also have um, one of the classic and the biggest businesses in healthcare technology is actually around uh, patient data. Uh, so if you, um, you know, go to the hospital and, or you go to a doctor and you, you know, you get your annual checkup or something, you want to see your test results and you want to see, you know, what your blood pressure was, what your other vitals were. So there are, um, I, I, I think at least thousand plus different applications, uh, which are some form or the other of patient engagement where you can log in and actually see all your healthcare information. So there's, there's a massive uh, amount of um, applications in just that space alone. So these are some areas of um, healthcare technology products uh, that very broadly uh, I'm referring to. Cool. So, um, oh, and sorry, I had one more bullet point on there. Uh, one of the things that's very different from uh, healthcare technology versus uh, consumer technology is your you spend a lot more time building products along edge cases, uh, which is essentially not your core user path than you do in other industries. So for example, I was at Instacart, um, your majority user path is, hey, I get the app, I wanna add groceries to my cart and I wanna check out, right? So the so majority of the focus uh, as a company at Instacart is on that consumer experience. Now there are some edge cases where okay, you know, I, um, I live in an area where I can't immediately get the delivery. So now I have to figure out how uh, I'm going to build a product to get that person a delivery. That's an edge case. You don't really, you know, that's not the first order of business when it comes to uh, PMs at Instacart and what they want to solve for. 
Whereas in healthcare technology, edge care cases, edge cases are, are basically your, um, that's the meat of your product. Because when you talk about patients, no two patients are alike. Um, even if you're building an app or a product for a specific you know, type of patient, even amongst them, you have multiple um, branches. Uh, and so you kind of have to now start taking into account, typically in classic product management, you always look at, hey, what is the my majority user flow and what's the ones which are edge cases? And you kind of are like, let's deprioritize the edge cases one, you know, and we'll do it in a later release. You can't really do that in healthcare. You kind of have to handle all the cases, even in your version one of a product. So it's actually a very heavy um, sort of a mindset in, in terms of product management. And in addition to all those things, um, there's, a, there's this other level of, and over the years, I'm, I'm still learning. Um, you know, I, by no means uh, I'm the uh, be all of all of this knowledge here, but data formats. So in classical um, healthcare, you have so many data formats of how thing, how information is exchanged. So if you go to um, a particular hospital, for ever giving a very simple example, you go to a hospital, as soon as you go there and they say, hey, Gaurav Kumar has checked in, uh, there's a certain message that's sent through the uh, backend systems of healthcare to say Gaurav Kumar has checked in. Now, if you go to another hospital system, uh, that's a completely different data format. So the number one, you know, big challenge that's in healthcare, especially here in the in the United States, is that no two health systems, no two software systems speak the same language. Um, and hence, if you have to build a product that, let's say, for example, uh, I want to build a product that says I want to get all my patient records from all the doctors I've ever gone to here in the United States, right? You have to like literally build an integration with every single one of those doctor systems. That's the only way to do it. There is no uniform data sharing, um, and and all those formats are different. So that's another aspect of healthcare technology, which is very unique. Whereas if you think about um, you know the non healthcare space, you have APIs where you can freely, like for example, you can just log into Product School, for example, using your Google logins or your LinkedIn or your Facebook, and you have all these APIs and and uh, OAuth and all of that that can help you just do things very quickly. In healthcare, you do not have that. Um, the other thing that you'll come across is versioning. So even within the same system, so there's a very large um, uh, healthcare um, and electronic medical record system called Epic. Um, and uh, so Epic is pretty much one of the market leaders here in the United States. The other one is Sonar. Now, if you if you're uh, if Hospital A is on Epic version nine, I'm just throwing out a number there, and Hospital B is on uh, Epic version ten. Uh, those two versions will most likely not talk to each other. Um, they might have made some changes and don't quote me on specifically this particular vendor, but one of the challenges, what you're, uh, what you're going to see is systems were built very specific to a certain set of standards and, and no one went back to do like backwards compatibility. So that did not happen at all in healthcare. So there's that versioning challenge. Um, the other thing that I've seen a lot in healthcare technology is, um, especially in non-consumer applications. So if you're, a, if you're, let's say, a doctor or a nurse or even a patient who's in your typical, you know, let's say UCSF or Sutter Health, uh, large health systems here in the Bay Area, right? Um, you will be using a system where the user experience is not built with the user in mind. Um, a lot of these systems are very old and archaic. Um, they're built on database structures that were designed in the 70s or the 80s, uh, and you've just, they've just built products on top of that. So again, uh, you know, a lot of the, when I say the buttons on the screen reduce engineering complexity, not the user's complexity, what I mean is the this, this system is designed just so that an engineering problem was solved, not necessarily from the perspective of what a user needs to accomplish. Um, and then finally, time to market. Um, with all these things that I've talked about so far, uh, that has led to healthcare in general lagging the rest of the consumer world. But I would say, you know, this is just my take on this is it's by about five years, um, just simply because of all these constraints, all this overhead of different formats, versions, uh, all the engineering complexity, all the regulatory complexity, um, healthcare technology lags um, uh, the rest of the world uh, by five years. Uh, yet it's super exciting. And that's kind of what I want to um, talk about in the next couple of slides. 
I'm going to pause there very quickly. Any questions on anything I've shared so far? Yes, we have one question. Um, how do you prioritize between your various users, given there are so many different stakeholders? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think um, the way that you prioritize between them is to really think about uh, what is number one, the purpose of the application you're building. So um, again, healthcare technology applications are very broad. So let's, uh, let's take a very specific example here, right? Like if you're building a product for, um, let's say a patient who has a certain, uh, let's take a condition here, diabetes, right? So you're working on a, with a company that's um, building a diabetes app. Now, obviously in that, there's the actual patient who's the diabetic, uh, there's the doctor that they go to for their treatment, uh, and then there's uh, the family or the, what you, in generally in healthcare, you call the care team, which is a family, it's probably a social worker, there's a nurse, et cetera, right? So the way you prioritize is uh, what is the what is the outcome you're expecting out of that application, uh, and if the purpose of the application is is purely educational, um, then of course you need to have valid educational sources. Uh, but then in that case, you just prioritize the user experience, right? Because a lot of educational data in healthcare, which is actually another big challenge, is it's all just lots of text. It's very text heavy. Uh, you have the likes of WebMD and Healthline and Mayo Clinic that have, you know, you Google search anytime you're feeling unwell and you want to look up a symptom, they, they do a decent job of like articulating that information, but it's still not, you know, it, you won't be able to explain that to someone who literally wants to understand something uh, very quickly. So that's how you prioritize the information. Whereas if you're building an, a diabetic application, which is now also tracking, let's say the patient's, uh, you know, bl blood glucose levels, now you have to prioritize the provider side as well. Because, um, yeah, and again, going tying back to that thing about healthcare and regula regulations and, and compliance, um, you won't be allowed to even go live with that application unless you had a medical professional who was validating that these blood glucose levels are actually correct. Because what if a patient like actually is going through like a spike in their levels or a dip in their levels uh, and they enter that information and your application does nothing, uh, then you're in for like a uh, liability. So it all depends on what is the application doing uh, and that will use uh, and what user problem is it solving for and that will usually guide which users you prioritize for over the others. Um, and, you know, I'd also extend this to just beyond healthcare, you know, in general, um, always start with the user problem. What's the user, uh, what, what problem are you trying to solve uh, for that user? And then you will come to identify if there are any other users that need to tie into that application that you need to solve the problem for. So um, that's how I would look at it. Uh, and uh, just to kind of like jump back into uh, where I was. So we had uh, talked about kind of like some of the, um, you know, uh, the very unique aspects about healthcare technology, which make product management there very interesting. So I'm just going to now switch over into kind of like talking about how do you get into that as a product manager? So whether you're an aspiring product manager um, or you are brand new in the space and you're interested in healthcare technology, or you are not interested in healthcare technology at all, but are like trying to look into it and see what that's all about. Um, what I would say is, the, one of the key things is, you know, speak the language and uh, you kind of, you kind of have to like learn the technology. There's so many resources online. If you just type, um, you know, what are the data formats in a typical healthcare, um, you know, transaction, you will find so much information there. Uh, but, you know, it's one of those things where you kind of have to know um, some of those basics. Uh, and let me tell you this, um, it's actually not super, it's not super difficult. Uh, especially if it's a product manager role that you're looking at or thinking of, um, all you need to know is really um, what are those different elements? Uh, and typically you'll be working with an engineering team uh, that will actually help you parse through all the technical aspects of it. So uh, definitely knowing the language of healthcare in terms of, uh, you know, when a patient's admitted, what, how is that data stored? How is that data exchanged between entities? Um, that's some of it. And of course, happy to like uh, get into more details um, offline as well. Um, one of the other uh, very key things here is just understanding public health and um, uh, policy. So especially here in the United States, we have a very unique um, healthcare situation in that um, healthcare is very fragmented. Uh, 
um, and the way it's delivered varies hugely from state to state, from region to region, uh, even hospital to hospital, right? So uh, one of the things that that'll be super helpful and truly is what actually motivates me as a product manager to actually be in healthcare for all this whole time is to actually look at the body of change that you can impact. And all of that leads back to public health uh, and how you can solve a problem um, that is actually a very complex problem here in the United States. If you take in the combination of a payer system, a healthcare system and the patient. So it's actually pretty complicated. Uh, one other thing I would also highly recommend um, is if, uh, you know, of course, um, you, some of you may or may not have experienced it firsthand, uh, whether it's like a, a chronic condition or an acute incident that made you inter interface with the American healthcare system. Speak to friends, family, uh, anyone you can about their experiences getting healthcare. And one of the things that will again emerge from that is. It, it sounds like it's a very simple problem to solve, right? Like uh, you want to, you, you have, um, let's say you, you stubbed your toe and uh, you, you need to like go to urgent care and have it looked at. Um, but that entire encounter is just so complicated. There's so many things, there's so many people you'll speak to, you still at the end of it um, are like, okay, I don't really know as the patient what's happening. So user empathy is kind of like a really big part of healthcare technology. Like um, um, a very simple way of putting it is in, in other consumer industries, we talk about how many millions of users can I impact um, and, and let's start there. Whereas in healthcare, I think it's kind of the, it's flipped on its end. Um, uh, I'd, draw, I'd, I'd say that you actually start with one patient. You're like, how can I change one patient's life, make their experience better? Um, and then how do I now copy paste and kind of like scale that across other patients? Because guess what? Again, there's edge cases and not all patients are the same. So uh, learning from people's experiences about their how they have gone through um, the healthcare system uh, is, is going to be great. Uh, and of course, network within the industry, um, it's, it's a big part of it. There's again, no secret formula about healthcare product management and other product management. Uh, I think uh, the one thing that will help you stand out, especially if you're getting into healthcare, um, is just the general knowledge about how things work in the industry and where things are going. Um, so that would kind of be my, my message here. Uh, I'm gonna pause there before I talk about some of these emerging areas, if there are any questions. Um, there is a question. Um, somebody uh, missed this, so they wanted you to answer this question again. Ah. Uh, why is the time to market so long? Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, can, I can spend uh, a, a long time talking about that. So the time to market is, is long uh, because if you look at your, I'm going to try and put this into the framework of, of non-healthcare versus healthcare. So in, um, and again, I'm gonna use Instacart as my example here because like that's uh, the one big, uh, you know, non-healthcare technology company I've been at. Um, so in Instacart, if you have to release a feature, right? What we typically do is uh, obviously, you know, product works with design uh, to figure out, okay, this is the next new thing we're gonna add. We're gonna create this screen where you can, um, you know, say if you wanna be, uh, if you want the shopper to like leave, their, uh, your groceries outside your front door. Great, right? Uh, so then you user test it very quickly. My user research team will go, it give, takes them about two or three days, they get back user feedback, you incorporate that feedback, you hand it to engineering, they build it, you ship it. Um, and you're doing continuous releases throughout all of this, right? So within a span of a week, I could have launched that feature. Now in healthcare technology, uh, let's look at a similar parallel, right? Like if I had to now say, uh, okay, I'm getting a prescription delivered um, and I want to say, uh, you know, I want to see if I can actually leave the prescription at the customer's doorstep or do I need the customer present. Now that changes the equation entirely because now as a product manager, I have to begin a lot of my work with legal and compliance. So in the state of California, it might be okay to do that. Whereas in the state of Georgia, it is not okay to do that in the, in the state of um, uh, Utah, you can't even deliver prescriptions, right? So now your entire product is not a single, you know, release of code. Now I have to have a 50 state rule engine, which will say, okay, if this product is being launched in so-and-so state, follow so-and-so rule. Um, and now I have to then look at, okay, are there any local compliance laws that I need to follow? 
Um, and all that research and all that uh, kind of like a work that you do ahead of the time, ahead of like even an engineer writing the code um, takes months. And so that's why time to market is, is so long. It's just because you have to do all this back and forth with legal and compliance, because keep in mind, um, it takes just one adverse incident to kind of like ruin the rep reputation of your product, ruin the reputation of your company. The fines are heavy from like the government uh, if there's any exposure of, of uh, patient uh, information. So um, yeah, I hope that answered the question, but that's just one of the reasons why um, the time to market is so long. Okay, what forums would you recommend to network within health tech PM? Uh, any core groups you, re you recommend? And also like, you know, we have feedback that they're loving this session. Oh, <laughs> uh, great. Uh, what was the question? Any, uh, what, what forums would you recommend to network within health tech PM? Any core groups you would recommend? Oh, any core groups? Um, you know, that's, that's a good question. So this is a group called HIMSS, H-I-M-S-S. It's kind of like the, um, I'd say it's the grand old uh, health information management systems. Uh, I, I don't even know what the acronym stands for. Um, and that is one good resource uh, to like just tap into on, on, on LinkedIn. They, they're a group that you can, uh, you know, just connect with people. Uh, and again, you know, LinkedIn's a great resource. You know, if you see someone, uh, shoot them a message um, or, you know, if they're connected to a friend of a friend, ask for an introduction, um, that would be a great place to like actually just learn more. Um, and again, you know, the friends and family network, I, I, I won't, I, I keep emphasizing how strong that is. Um, you know, someone will always know someone's friend's daughter who actually works in a hospital kind of thing. Definitely tap into that network. It's super helpful to like learn more about that. Got to, did you want to continue or? Yeah. Could you, uh, uh, I can just finish up on this slide and, and unfortunately I kind of have to jump off. Um, but I uh, just wanted to kind of highlight some of the more, you know, quote unquote, cool areas of healthcare technology that I know of that's coming, uh, that's coming down the pike. Um, so a lot of this you will see in these consumer facing applications like Noom that's focused on like, you know, weight loss. Um, you know, I mentioned this pre previously, but you have, um, headspace and all these other applications on like they use this thing called cbt or cognitive behavioral um, uh, therapy where uh, you're using these applications to help change behaviors and drive better outcomes um, and it usually is focused a lot on mental health uh, and helping things like anxiety um, you know, depression uh, there's uh, i forget the name of the startup but there's this um, i think it's talk space maybe uh, but i could be wrong but there's this startup where you can actually do a quick uh, you know, therapist session through your phone, which is just so incredible. Uh, and I think the mental health space um, is, is ex it's exploding. Uh, it's a fantastic area to go into because I think uh, one of the number one things that we don't talk about as a population and as a community is, is the severity of mental health conditions, even though, you know, physically and physiologically, someone could be perfectly okay. Um, another area which is huge, and actually it's, uh, you know, we are seeing it happen around us with everything going on about COVID-19, uh, the whole population health and uh, community analytics space to figure out how populations behave uh, and respond to different therapies, to respond to different uh, social dynamics. Um, and you're seeing it right now. Like, for example, of all countries, why was Italy so terribly hit? Well, because culturally, they, uh, you know, Italians spend a lot of time with their elders. And so what happened was the disease uh, went through asymptomatic younger people and then unfortunately uh, and tragically um, infected their, their seniors. Uh, and that's why you're seeing that. So just looking at the dynamics of how population health works uh, is another fascinating area of health tech. Um, the delivery gig economy. Um, I worked with this um, at uh, Instacart and at a startup before that as well, you know, delivering prescriptions. Um, there's also these models emerging of uh, like, for example, Lyft and Uber are, are doing their part by partnering with hospitals and health systems to get patients to appointments. That's uh, a huge deal right there. So that's another area where I'm seeing some traction. And then finally, last but not the least, I had to throw drones in there. Uh, it's still an emerging area, but believe it or not, a few months ago, uh, a startup that's backed by Google Ventures, I forget their name, uh, did this pilot in this small town on the East Coast um, where CVS a drone picked up a delivery order from a CVS and dropped it off at a customer's uh, location. So uh, kind of fascinating stuff that's going on. 
um, super interesting. But again, um, some of the things I've covered in this presentation is just mostly around to get there, to build that great consumer experience, you have all this back uh, story that you need to build in terms of all the challenges you'll face uh, and things to overcome. So it is very exciting and um, uh, it's, it's a big passion of mine. So I'm happy to talk more about it um, beyond just this particular webinar. Awesome. Um, thank you so much, Gaurav. Um, so I think somebody here wanted to know um, products in Instacart. Um, I don't know if you have time to talk about it, like specific to um, health tech, basically. If you can describe that. and. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. The, the one and only one that I uh, that Instacart has is, is specifically related to prescription delivery, purely because... Um, you know, uh, some of the grocery partners that Instacart works with also have a pharmacy, right? So typically, what what's your uh, user experience if you're just walking into the grocery store? You go in, uh, you're there to pick up your prescriptions, and at the same time, you buy some bananas, maybe some milk and orange juice, and uh, maybe a pizza, and you go back home. Uh, so applying that same model to the delivery uh, business is like, okay, you have a prescription. And so do I also want to add those similar items, but instead of me being physically in the store, I'm getting those delivered to my door. So um, that's kind of uh, pretty much what, what there is right now at Instacart. Awesome. 